can I start by asking you, only semi-satirically, whether you have noticed the European election campaign is on? Well, I have. I mean, truth be told, Andrew, you know, in previous European elections, it hasn't been the highest profile of political events compared to compared to other elections. Of course, we just had the local elections as well. A lot of us been out uh, campaigning hard in those. But Seriously, are you going to have a launch? Are you going to launch your campaign? I'm not sure we need a launch. I mean, we've been very clear about the outcome that we want. We're leaving the European Union. We need to make so, sure we do it with a deal. But we don't actually want MEPs to be having to take their seats. We want people to vote Conservative. I always want people to vote Conservative. But I actually don't want these uh, the people who are elected to have to take up position. So no launch. When are we going to see your manifesto? I can give you the manifesto now, if you like. No, I'd like to see it on a piece of, well, piece it of doesn't, paper. It doesn't take a very large piece of paper to say what our approach is. We want to make sure we leave the European Union, we do it as soon as possible, and we do it with a good negotiated exit deal, which is good for people's jobs and livelihoods. But if I'm standing on the doorstep and I'm approached by a Tory MEP candidate, I might want to know what they want to do as an MEP if they have to take their seats, which they might very well do. There's a whole set of really big European issues coming up over the next few years. And without a manifesto, I have absolutely no idea what Tories will be standing for. Well, None. Our plan is very, very clear. We should have left the European Union already. We didn't manage to do that because there haven't been enough votes in Parliament to do it. But we are going to do it as soon as possible. We need to make sure we do it with a, a good deal. And yeah, you're right, by the way, there are lots of big European issues coming up. And that's one of the reasons it's important we have a close future relationship uh, with the European Union, because we have a lot of interests in common. We have to work together, of course, on a lot of stuff. It, but that it isn't I, about taking up positions in the European Parliament, because we're leaving the European Union. It would be quite nice to know what your, what your policies were, however. Um, given what's happening in these election campaigns so far, and you've seen the polls as well as everybody else, it's pretty clear why the Tory party didn't want them to happen. According to Conservative Home, a survey by your own Conservative Home, 62% of Tory members say they will back Nigel Farage's Brexit party at this coming election, and 40% of Tory councillors, elected Tory councillors, are also going to vote for the Brexit party. What do you say to them? Well, I don't think anyone's in any doubt this, these are going to be difficult elections for us. That much has been clear from the uh, from the very start. I mean, look, for some people, this is the ultimate protest vote opportunity. Actually, turnouts tend to be quite low in European elections. But they've been very important anyway, and, pe and people do use it as something of a free vote. And I think, you know, that's going to be even more true this time. I mean, actually, ironically, this is, in a sense, for some people, you know, it is the second referendum. Uh, but actually, but if, you know, the important thing, actually, is to, if you want to cast your vote to say, I want to leave the European Union... Do it now uh, and do it with a good negotiated exit deal. Then vote Conservative. If it's a second referendum, even some of your own MPs are, not, are thinking about not voting for you. Even some of your own MPs. Maria Caulfield said this week, would she vote for Mr Farage's Brexit party? She replied, I don't know. I will wait and see what the candidates are and make my decision then. I may not vote at all. If Tory MPs can't be persuaded to vote Tory, why should anybody else? Well, some people may be reconsidering their support for the uh, Nigel Farage party, perhaps after what they've seen uh, this morning. My encouragement is that we are a party which is very firmly uh, determined to make sure we leave the European Union. Uh, we do it quickly and we do it well. And so I encourage people to vote Conservative. As a government, as a cabinet, your strategy now relies first on these talks with the Labour Party. But Sir Graham Brady of the 22 Committee mm. has said these talks are petering out. And you read the papers tomorrow, there's a lot of pessimism about them. Well, I'd rather we hadn't had to go into talks with the uh, with the Labour Party. I've voted consistently since the morning after the referendum. I've been committed to and have voted in Parliament repeatedly to make sure we leave the European Union. The problem, Andrew, as you know well, is that there hasn't been a majority uh, to do that. And in fact, of all the different options that people have put forward as well, there's no shortage of them. At least eight different ways that you could leave the European Union. They've all got their cheerleaders, Wait. but none of them have a majority. And the, re the reality of living in a parliamentary democracy, and by the way, thank God that we do, the reality of that is that you need the votes okay. in Parliament to be able to move forward. Gavin Williamson, who re until recently was sitting beside you in Cabinet, mm. has described these as a betrayal and incredibly naive, these talks. Well, what's, what's the alternative, right? We have to find a way through. That means you have to get a majority. We haven't Although 90% actually of Conservative MPs have voted uh, in favour of the, the UK's negotiated deal, that hasn't been enough to get it over the line. The reality okay. is you need those votes no. to do it. And there, there is, are, look, I disagree, I, 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 I disagree with Labour on many, many things and with Jeremy Corbyn on even more. But there is some commonality of interest here. We do both need to get it done. Because actually, okay. this isn't just about parties or individuals. This is about our democracy. It's about our system. 
and to repay the trust that people put in us, we need to get things done on behalf of our constituents. The problem the Labour Party has in these talks was very eloquently explained by John McDonnell when he was in that chair mm. last week. He said, we are dealing with a very unstable government. It's like trying to enter into a contract with a company that's going into administration and the people who are going to take over are not willing to fulfil that contract. And we all know who we're talking about. We cannot negotiate like that. That is why, in the end, these talks are going to break down. Well, I haven't been in the room for the negotiations. My understanding is that, in fact, both sides have entered into them in a good, constructive spirit. And the truth is we need to find a way through. Any negotiated exit from the European Union involves a withdrawal agreement. So whatever we're going to do to move forward, actually, we need to get through this uh, phase. And as I say, I think you know the public actually expect us to be able to reach out across the party divide when that is needed in order to do things in the national interest. The talks go on this week and we can't prejudge them, yeah. obviously, but if they break down, there's no plan B left at all. Given the numbers, then you are completely scuppered as a government. You have no way forward at all on Brexit, do you? Well, look, I, I, hope, the, I hope the talks will uh, find progress, but actually, I mean, there, there is, there, there is a, a potential... Uh, alternative, which has always been clear, that then you know the government would come back to Parliament with a you know a series of a series of votes in, to try and find a stable majority. But it, it is true. I mean, you're right. You need to have not only a majority but a stable majority to be able to pass this legislation through Parliament. It's not just one vote. You know, we've got to pass the withdrawal agreement bill through Parliament in order to be sure. able to move to the next stage. You've been a very loyal member of the cabinet. There aren't many of them. But nonetheless, when you hear George Osborne say it is time to face reality and members of the cabinet to tell Theresa May her time is up, don't you agree with him? Look, I don't think actually this is about uh, the position of the Prime Minister and the leader of the party. This is about the maths in, the, you know, in our parliamentary party and indeed in Parliament as well. I think the Prime Minister has shown the most remarkable uh, tenacity and drive and commitment in in seeing through this process, which has been very difficult. But look at the hard negotiations. Yeah, yeah, sure, but hard negotiations with Europe, and at the same time having to deal with all the negotiations at home. I think she's done a remarkable job, and no one should be under any illusion that just changing Let's, okay. the person Let's, in that position would actually would change the parliamentary okay. reality. 